correct views. Sam I.B. to Angie doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. HDEF up there uh, going live right down here. Um, going to be also going live tomorrow, so I'm not doing a show as long today, mostly in part, uh, again, because tomorrow's the primaries and I'm going to be posting again. But many of you are used to me being here on Monday, so do me a huge favor. Hit share and hit subscribe. That helps so much. Um, New American, Obama and Z to sign <clears throat> UN Global Warming Pact on Earth Day. Uh, that is to say it's already been done. Um, the science has proven that man-made global warming is a lie. I'm, I'm sorry, maybe, maybe you don't like my hair, maybe you don't like my zombie t-shirts, but hey, I'm wearing it because it's time to wake the zombies up. The Earth, with Earth Day as a backdrop and a propaganda pretext, President Obama will join Communist Chinese dictator Xi Jinping on April the 22nd in signing the Paris Climate Change Accord that emerged from the United Nations summit in Paris last December. The Paris Pact has been heralded as a major breakthrough in saving the planet from the fictitious threat that is man-made global warming. Um, anthrop anthropogenic global war anth anthropogenic global warming as they're calling it. The Obama Z partnership, it goes on, is created with providing is credited, excuse me, with providing the impetus for finalizing the draconian global deal that will penalize the world's poor. That means drive up the cost of heating oil and gasoline, impoverish the United States, and reward Wall Street's carbon investors and tyrannical regimes. And it will have zero impact, it says, on the climate's climate. And there are extensive articles, videos, as you can see uh, right there on uh, low def fact cam, little red link. You do realize that this is, this is not about controlling man-made climate change, which isn't happening. It's about controlling you, is what it's about. It's about altering the way you're allowed to live and the things that you're allowed to do. And don't tell me that this works in other countries. America is a very big nation. And... The, the laws that work in a smaller nation is not something that happens when you're dealing with a very large land mass and they travel such as we do. It says, unlike president, unlike our, unlike president, a good name, yeah, and they have it in the quotes for a reason, he's a dictator. Unlike President Z and other dictators who will be signing the UN agreement, President Obama does not enjoy their autocratic powers to enact the treaty by executive decree, even though he has become accustomed to acting as if he already does possess that authority. It says he knows that even with all of the establishment media support thus far and additional propaganda to be gained on Earth Day, there is still a major roadblock in the final uh, adoption to the Senate. According to our U.S. Constitution, which Obama has sworn to uphold, you can argue that he dropped the ball there, the Senate must ratify all treaties. Moreover, once the American public becomes aware of the horrendous price tag associated with this U.N. plan to shackle the planet, it is even likely that there will be a re-energized movement to kick the United States, United Nations out of the United States, which I think would be a step in the right direction. Twelve trillion dollars. This piece of rubbish is going to cost twelve trillion dollars. How horrifically expensive could the UN climate pact be for the American consumers if the Senate does ratify it? Twelve point one trillion, at least, piled on top of the already suicidal nineteen trillion debt load. This new twelve plus trillion, courtesy of the UN, will be over and above all of the other trillions of dollars wasted annually on unconstitutional big government pork welfare and regulatory spending. Meanwhile, the only the most naive observers expect Xi Jinping and the other leaders signing the Paris Treaty to abide by its terms. And only the most deluded believe that it would have any real impact on global climate, even if they did abide by them. While the United States would be immediately hammered by the treaty's impact, enforced by the EPA, activist judges, and veritable army of militant NGOs, 
The usual establishment media scaremongers, China and the rest of the world's major polluters, would get a free ride on mere promises to try and meet the treaty's objective by 2020 to 2030. Meanwhile, us in the U.S. would get hosed. China has hundreds of new coal plants. Their economy is being run badly, but there's a lot of money going through it. Why? Because they're opening up coal plants while we're shutting them down. China will continue its rampage of coal-fired construction, but if the Obama has its way, Xi's regime will probably be able to continue to receive EPA grants to finance its coal expansion, while the U.S. coal mine and plants are being shuttered. You say that you're not familiar with the EPA practice? Then take a look at a congressional hearing, and there's a link here with Representative Morgan that proves that that's the case. The EPA is paying for China to open up brand new coal plants, while the Obama administration is destroying the energy market in this country and rising, raising prices through the roof for everyone on any kind of energy at all here. I'm telling you, friends, I've said it a lot, the man has to be the single worst president uh, easily of my lifetime. I mean, I used to always say that it was Carter. Carter was an amazing man uh, compared, to, compared to Obama here. Um, and you find this, we sent all of our jobs to China, and yet China started. Well, it's going to help China. What about the poor Chinese? It's going to help them. No, it's not. They're still as poor as ever, and the leaders have just taken our jobs and gotten rich off of them. Well, we've always heard the saying, especially here with Obama and uh, Z, that um, politics makes strange bedfellows. Did you know that it could be literal? Observer.com. Former Russian Prime Minister caught on camera having sex with the opposition leader. Uh, might be a few interesting pictures here. Nothing too bad for those of you. Uh, 18 and over should be fine. Political campaigns in the U.S. can be dirty, but Russia has tipped the nasty meter again. Now, a lot of people believe that this has come out <clears throat> courtesy of Putin, because we all know Putin has a habit of, um, oh, there's a really good likelihood that he poisoned his last opposition of any significance. I used a plonium and nuclear, used nuclear poison to kill him. Well, this is better than that, and this guy kind of lucked out. On Saturday morning, a number of British newspapers, including Daily Mail and Mirror, broke the story to the West that some hours earlier glued millions of Russians to their television sets. Mikhail Kashin, I think it's Kashinov, a former minister of finance and prime minister under Vladimir Putin, is chairman of the opposition party Parnas. It was created long ago from the late Boris Nemstov. He says he was caught in a scandal that will inevitably ruin not only his political aspirations, but also his family life. Clips of a secretly taped 40-minute video were shown on the Kremlin-loyal NTV channel Krishnov's Day in hopes of delivering another devastating blow to Mr. Putin's rivals in the upcoming elections on state parliament in Duma. In the video, so yeah, it is, it's like the October surprise <clears throat> that you see in this country where they drop some great scandal right before an election. Um, this is uh, akin to that. Uh, just uh, imagine the timing. In the video, the former prime minister removes his usual sharp suit and expensive tie, leaving his thick framed glasses on. He goes to bed with his fellow party member and his personal political assistant, Natalia Pelavina, and he's 58, married, has two children. He wears seductive. She wears. Miss Pelavina wears seductive lingerie and waits for him in bed. A love scene follows. She is 38, not married, and has no children. Although born in Moscow, she is a citizen of Great Britain and maybe the USA. At the age of 11, she moved from the Soviet Union to England with her parents, only to return to Russia 10 years ago. For four years, she's been a member of Parnas, raising the position that Mr. Kashinov's assistant in charge of the party's youth department. And it appears that's not all she's in charge of. The passionate encounter takes place in an unknown safe house, obviously bought for such purposes. Although the video is repulsive, it is the audio that sent political shocks around the world. Um, the Panavina taps on the bed, inviting the 
Former Prime Minister, come on, she says. But first, tell me who else but me you have had here. He is happy to play the game. You got yourself a pretty little thing, he says, flipping the blanket to look at Mrs. Provina's most intimate part. After sex, Mr. Keshinov in good spirits begins and sing songs of Soviet pop culture. They play Name This Tune, and it's fun for both. <laughs> I guess she's good at guessing. I wonder what else she's good at. I haven't watched the whole video. She is pretty old. Um, later, relaxed and calm, uh, Mr. Kushnov opens up about his family. His daughter, his son-in-law, bought a penthouse in Manhattan. They uh, want to move not to the U.S., but to Great Britain, and he thinks it's the right decision. La, la, la. Um, he writes, what miserable people they are, Miss Pelavinia says disapprovingly. No, he insists. It's the right decision. When mass murder starts here in Russia, he will be able to leave and take his family there. In other words, he knows that uh, there's a hot war and the back burner between Russia and that their economy is crashing. It's time to talk about the good old days, Miss Pelavina lashes out at Mr. Krishnov's friends, the oligarchs. Their billions are not honest, she says. Well, they made their money as a result of the transformation of Russia in the 1990s, he corrects her patiently. She doesn't buy it. Wasn't it stolen? Stolen? What do you mean? Stuff was bought for five pockets and sold for five rubles. This is not theft. If so, then I am a thief as well, and I have made it all this way. I bought everything for five pockets and sold them for five rubles. And I have five apartments and a couple of houses. So uh, basically they're going on and on and on about uh, political opponents and everyone else right after doing the rob. Misha Two Centimeters is what they're calling him. That's funny. He said the video is not him and it's all a conspiracy. <laughs> she says, forgive me, I'm a woman and I have needs in life. It, it's not the two people are having sex that matters so much. It's that they were supposed to be on these different sides and all of this and that. And it's all been crap. None of it's been real at all. They've uh, been uh, just... Politics makes strange bedfellows. Friends, I found this to be... Uh, particularly dreadful news, why we're on a blue topics, as it were. <clears throat> For those of you that uh, have a particular palate that leans towards the flavor of mine, the mirror.co.uk oral sex is leading to more mouth cancers. New study shows link to the disease. Twice as many men as women are diagnosed with oral throat cancer, which can be caused by the HPV virus. Um, this is another reason to keep your vitamin C levels very high. Um, does it cure cancer? No. It sometimes can stop it from developing if you're prone to it due to other agents such as HPV. It's also important to know that not all forms of HPV cause cancer. Only certain ones. But I mean, <clears throat> with the likelihood of oral sex happening in instances where full-blown sex doesn't, and the, the, if you're married and the person you're with would happen to have it, it's very easy to transfer it back and forth. That's how Michael Douglas, we'll get to that in a minute, was believed to have gotten it. Well, this is terrible news to find. The HPV virus, which causes cervical cancer, quite often ends up in the mouth during oral sex. Now think about how many people you may or may not have had oral sex with in your life, gentlemen. It's just as likely to cause cancer there as if it was in the cervix, particularly if it's HPV type 16. That's important. There's hundreds of them. That's the bad one. So when you hear that one in three people have HPV, that's true and it's not true. It's not this one. HPV causes changes in the cells it inflicts, which can lead to cancer if those cells are in moist membranes, such as the vagina, cervix, anus, or mouth. Mouthwash after sex might be a good idea. Half a million people a year are diagnosed worldwide <clears throat> with oral and throat cancer. 7,000 in the U.K., Twice as many men as women. You can see why that would be. That's because oral sex on a woman is more likely risky than it is to a man. Each year, 150,000 people die of it. Michael Douglas has not been looking so good lately. Um, it follows a study in the New, Journal England, New, Jer New England Journal of Medicine, which showed that people affected with HPV were 32 more times likely to develop these cancers. And uh, it's from a U.S. journal, JAMA Oncology, is the first to show conclusively that HPV-16 presence in the mouth leads to the development of throat and mouth cancer. 
Um, spread to the skin to sp spread by skin to skin contact, not just by sex. HPV affects almost everyone at some stage in their life, but in most people, their immune system fights it off and it does no harm. Occasionally, however, the virus takes hold and cancer is the result. The most dangerous strains of HPV are 16 and 18. They cause up to 95% of cervical cancers and are now linked to oral cancer. The mouth is structured and says much like a vagina and a cervix. Smoking and drinking alcohol <clears throat> help promote HPV infection. So if you combine them, that's particularly bad. Um, the Albert Einstein College of Medicine in New York now says people carrying the virus in their mouth are 22 times more likely to develop a potentially lethal tumor. So, friends, it's a good idea to keep an eye on that if you are uh, sexually active. That's sort of your warning for the day. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Just a couple more stories to get to you, brought to you by Sticker Junkie. As you can see behind me, Sticker Junkie. When you go there, J-U-N-K-I-E, when you go there on checkout, type in The Correct Views. Not only are you going to get amazing stickers, but you're also going to get them at an amazing price. And that's going to be because you listen to The Correct Views. Let me go ahead real quick, if I may, here. I'm going to put this on screen share. It's a hint at what might be coming here on the elections tomorrow. I'm going to be on this. Uh, real clear politics. Trump. As you can see, you're looking to have a very good night. A very, very, very good night. I'm going to scroll down so you can see it. In Pennsylvania, he's leading in every one. Pennsylvania, Maryland, Connecticut. Kasich is doing well in Connecticut. Trump dominating in Rhode Island, Delaware. This, this is going to be a big deal. This, this might be what puts Mr. Trump over the top. It really might. And they're doing everything they can <clears throat> to stop the Trump machine, to stop the progress that demand has made. And this is one such story here. BizPack reviewed Jersey man could face jail for illegal Trump flag. I don't care if I have to buy 1000 or hire a Marine to keep guard. <clears throat> You've got to admire Joseph Hornick's spunk, the West Long Branch. New Jersey man is determined to keep his Donald Trump flag flying regardless of the cost, and lately, that cost has gone pretty steep. In the past, vandals would, randals would either damage the flags or steal them outright. He called the police several times, but to no avail. And on March 25th, he got two officers who showed up, not to take report of the thefts, but to give him a ticket. Displaying campaign signs <clears throat> on one's lawn more than 30 days before an election is against the law in New Jersey, in that borough, and that includes at least Donald Trump flags. Former Democratic Councilman and Hornick neighbor Brian Haggerty made sure authorities knew of this grievous violation. There's a Democrat, once again, using ordinances that break a person's fundamental right so that they can say that that ordinance is part of the law and therefore you've forsaken your right. That's not the way that works. And again, he's saying that uh, he felt his constitutional right had been violated. <clears throat> His court date is April 20th, 420, I wonder how it went, but Hornick doesn't intend to let that stop him. He says, I don't care if I have to buy a thousand Trump flags. I'll keep putting them up, and if I have to hire a Marine to keep guard, I will. I have backup flags, and I'll buy the warehouse of Donald Trump flags, I will, because I'm not going to give up the battle. <clears throat> and I, I agree with him. I agree with him totally. Um, I, if it's illegal to put them in your yard, then you should go ahead and put them on his rooftop. You should put them in his windows. You should put them everywhere and not stop at all. And friends, that brings us to the Dumdy of the day. Hoarder, <clears throat> compulsive hoarder, crushed to death under mound of rubbish. Now, for those of you that don't know what hoarding is, there are people that are addicted to keeping everything. And by everything, I don't mean, you know, oh, I might be able to use this safety pin even though I have 50,000 of them. That can be a sign or a symptom, but that's not what I'm referring to. I'm referring to people that live like this. Those of you on screen share know exactly what I mean. I mean, you can only... Darwin wasn't right about Mary very many things, but he did talk about the survival of the fittest in that the dumbest would weed themselves out. And uh, that might be what we're seeing here. A compulsive hoarder has been, this is independent, has been found crushed to death under a mound of rubbish.
police said. The man, 51, who lived in Alcabre in northwestern Spain, was believed to have suffered Diogenes syndrome, a condition in which people often collect things compulsively and neglect themselves. He was discovered by police after a friend living in Canary Islands expressed concern over his lack of communication. The deceased had not used Facebook or WhatsApp for at least six days. On investigating the call, police found a pile of rubbish at the man's property and it was something out of the ordinary, officers told the newspaper. You can see behind me what this looked like. Um, his corpse was discovered crushed between a collapsed heap of garbage and the door of the house. Such was the quality of rubbish that officers struggled to enter the house and firefighters had to be called to remove the body. Foul play is not suspected. It's a syndrome in which the condition applies to all compulsive hoarders, but is used primarily to refer to older people who may also refuse help or risk. I don't think they should be forced out of their home or whatever. Again, I don't have anything against someone keeping whatever they choose to keep in their house, but let's face it, at some point... Darwinism kicks in. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. I will be on tomorrow with some stories as well as all the updates on the election. Thank you for listening, friends. Please subscribe if you're listening to this, whatever you're listening on. Media Speaks here. Uh, High Def will be up there as soon as I get it produced. Um, <clears throat> it looks like the live videos are going to be going as they are now, and the HDF is going to be the more produced uh, when there's time to do so. They take a while to render. Good night, friends. God bless, and thanks for listening.